Hi beautiful souls, it's Sun and I and welcome to my channel. Today I thought I would share with you my Indie Oracle collection. It's not a huge collection so we should be able to have a look at it in one video. If not I'll break it into two parts. The decks that we'll be looking at today are Oracle of Echoes by Anna Turian, Connected and Free Alchemist Oracle by Lauren Aletta, The Wild Woman Mystery Cards by Elizabeth McLeod, Chris Ann's Sacred Creators Oracle, the Weaver's Oracle by Karen Lynn Hillier, Nicole Rallis, two decks here, the Pythia Botanica and the Maiden Oracle. Here is the Earthbound Oracle by A.L. Schwartz, Oracle of Oddities by Claire Goodchild, the Land Sky Oracle by Teresa Hutch, and then back here we have Signs from Your Loved One, Spirit Cards by Diana Lynn, Seeds of Shakti Cards by Sharon Basanti, and then up here at the front by Deja Durit, we have my quality time self-care cards. All right, in no particular order, let's start with the Connected and Free Alchemist Oracle. This was one of my first indie Oracle decks, and I still use this deck. I love it. There are so many cards that I connect with at a very deep level. It does come with this guidebook. I know a lot of the indie Oracle decks, you have to order the guidebook separately, but this one does come with it. And if any of the cards are a little more challenging, Lauren has put a lot of thought into um, the descriptions in this guidebook. And as well, you have crystal associations for each of the cards. So yeah, so it's a really well written guidebook. The cards come in this box, which I've had for a long time, it had in and out of my basket going to and from readings, and it's really held up well. So that's not, um, looks like it would, would not hold up, but it's been a really, really sturdy box. These are the backs, and if you have the accompanying tarot deck, you'll recognize this symbol. The tarot deck has three of these symbols on the back. The cardstock is quite thick on these cards and probably better to um, overhand shuffle these cards. I have not trimmed them. You'll notice that you see the copyright on the border of each of the cards here, but I have not, um, not done that. The cardstock is quite thick, so I'm a little nervous about, um, about trimming these cards, and they're just beautiful the way they are. Because there's so much on each of the cards, the, the copyright actually doesn't stick out for me just when you fan them like that. So I read these cards intuitively, rarely do I go to the guidebook, but once in a while, actually I know them quite well, but when I first got the deck, there was a few of the cards that kind of stumped me and I did refer to the guidebook. This reminds me of children's book, Papa, Please Get the Moon for Me. <laughs> so yeah, these are amazing cards and I just want to show you. I know it's getting more and more popular to have a, a chai card in your deck. This one is also one of my favorites, Soul Knowing. I use these cards with clients all the time and there's always a deep level of connection to the reading and I use it in conjunction with tarot. Here it is. This deck reads really well with all kinds of tarot decks. This is the Oracle of Echoes by Anna Turian. I did have the PDF guidebook printed, but I'm not very happy with the way it turned out. I would love one day if Anna would have this um, would have this printed. I would definitely buy it. It is a deck that I read intuitively, but I, you know, once in a while I do refer to the guidebook. So it's a really nice resource to have. And then the cards come in a tuck box, this very well-worn tuck box. If you haven't seen this deck, you are truly missing something. These are the beautiful card backs. And then the cards are borderless with a small black border on the bottom with the keyword. They are not numbered. I believe the guidebook is in alphabetical order. The colors are just stunning. This is a highly intuitive deck. It is suitable for all genders, all ages. It taps into deep emotions, shadow work. It's great for a daily card pull. It is truly, it's one of one of my favorite. I would say this one and the one you just saw are my two favorite um, Oracle decks. I go to them all the time. I use them with client readings every every week. I do not have a favorite card in this deck. I love every single card. I mean, look at this, a gift. 
so beautiful. Okay, so that's Oracle of Echoes. Next is the Earthbound Oracle by A.L. Schwartz. This is one of three of his decks. They all look very similar in coloring and card back, so they work really well together in uh, three-voice reading if you do things like that. So a Lillerman deck, a tarot deck, and an Oracle deck. So these are the card backs, and you see the wood grain feature on all of the cards. So you can see here the different shades of wood grain. There is no guidebook with this. It's a, an intuitive deck and it's super easy to read. Great deck for daily card pull. This is not a hug deck. None of the decks I've showed you so far are what I would call a hug deck. They all have a good balance of both um, illuminating positive cards and more what I would call shadow cards. One of the nice features of this deck is that there are a few cards that come in pairs. So here we have illuminate and obfuscate. And this card does, this deck does have element cards. So you've got um, air, fire, water, and earth. There's a sun card. So there's a sun and a moon card as well, too. Um, yeah, this really is, uh, this is a great deck just to add to, to any reading, really. Much easier to read than the tarot deck. And this is definitely my favorite card, Voice. This is a small poker size deck. So if I compare this to Oracle of Echoes, right, it's a lot, a lot smaller. So Oracle, or Oracle of Echoes and the previous deck are more of a tarot size deck. This is a, a little deck. All right, so that's the Earthbound Oracle. Here is... Signs from Your Loved One's Spirit Cards by Diana Lynn. I met Diana at a mediumship workshop a few years ago, and I believe she had just completed her deck or was about to complete her deck, and I ordered several copies of her deck, and I used this to give away to clients after a client reading. So I just fan out the cards, and they choose a card, and it's a really nice way to, um, to wind up a reading. So it comes in this two-part box. They're quite large oracle cards. This is not a fancy production, um, and you definitely could use your corner rounder to, to round the edges if you were keeping them for yourself, but I just give them away and I leave them as they are. So on the top you have a theme, and then on the bottom you have a message on each card. Yeah, and so these I find these cards really connect uh, deeply with clients, either something in the photograph or something in the keyword above and people always are are touched to receive these cards as a takeaway yeah so those are signs from your loved ones this is the Seeds of Shakti Oracle by Sharon Basanti. The cards come with the PDF guidebook or you have the option of purchasing the printed guidebook. This is a small deck, poker size, same as the Earthbound Oracle in a tuck box. The printed guidebook is well worth the money. It's very well done, great binding. This one has really stood up. You get a larger than card size black and white photo and a full page, sometimes more than a page description of the cards along with a, an affirmation on the bottom. So this deck includes chakra cards, moon phase cards, and lots of sacred, uh, lots of sacred symbols, goddesses, things like that. Um, one of the, this is really nice. The cards are black and white on the back. So when you take a black card and a white card, you have this lovely um, mandala of balance between the, the dark and the light. The, the color on this side, it does not reflect the energy on the other side. So these are not all feminine cards and these are masculine cards. It's just a, it's just a nice um, feature of the card backs. These are super bright cards. So if you love bright uh, colors, washes, watercolor washes, you will love this color palette. We have deities, uh, moon phases, sacred symbols. Yeah. 
I use this deck for moon readings. I use, I pull out the chakra cards for significators and other readings. Sometimes I use this just as a single card pull. And there is the Kali card in this deck. So very true to the traditional meaning. And this deck also has a chai card. I love my chai cards. So this is the Seeds of Shakti Oracle by Sharon Basanti. Next, Oracle of Oddities by Claire Goodchild. This is an out-of-print deck, which I did acquire after it went out of print at a very reasonable price, and it wasn't that difficult to complete the whole set. So first edition, second edition, and third edition. The third edition does include chakra cards, which um, I have pulled out of the deck. So if you want a deck that has chakra cards, the third edition is the one with the chakra cards. They're very, very pretty, but I just have, I use the chakra cards as significator cards, and I tend to use them from um, Sharon Basanti's deck. Okay, so let's have a look at the cards. This is a large stack of cards, placing them all together, even having removed the chakra cards. The backs are this lovely green, and there's a, the fronts are kind of this tea stain, and quite a few different shades. Looks a bit like the, the wooden oracle. These are a little larger though. These are not small poker size. These are not quite tarot size and not poker size, somewhere in between. One of the features of this deck is the pairings. So there's a lot of um, contrasting pairs, which is really fun. I teach yoga and I also teach Reiki. And so I love to pull this deck out or have it out on the altar when, um, when I'm working with students. It's really fun to kind of figure out the energy bet between the botany and the anatomy. Yeah, so this is, um, it's a very clever clever deck and it's a lot of cards if to have all three of them together um, if you're working with a lot of people then that's a reason to have them all together but you might just want to just keep it separated into its um into one of its parts so that is the oracle of oddities next we have the wild women mystery cards by elizabeth mcleod I met Elizabeth a few years ago now at the very terminal, oddly. She had a booth at the marketplace there, and I was instantly attracted to her artwork. And I went in and had a look at the cards, her essential oil blends, and kind of mesmerized, actually, with her personality. She was so friendly and welcoming and gentle and authentic. And this was my first indie oracle deck, and it has been... A pleasure to meet her on and off over the years and to work with her deck and yeah I just can't say enough about these cards if after this quick little look through you are intrigued with these cards I would go right away to her website which is wildwomanenchanted.com and get a copy of the cards because I know there are very few left in stock and she has no intention of reprinting all right, so let's have a look at the cards. These are really, really pretty cards. You'll see the earth below, the sky above. All of the women are in silhouette. Most of them are in movement, and the keywords are highly intuitive. And the combination of the, the keyword and the artwork makes these cards really, really easy to work with. These cards are more than an empowerment deck. These cards tap into a place in your psyche and your subconscious that you probably weren't aware that you haven't tapped into for a very long time or maybe even never. These cards touch a truly magical place for me. And I love just looking at them. I love leafing through this deck. I love gazing through this deck. I love reading the guidebook. And these cards make me feel heard. They also give me permission to 
be exactly who I want to be. And I think that was one of Elizabeth's intentions. If you just look at her face on her webpage, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. She is such a special, special soul. So let's just draw a card because I would love to read a little bit from the guidebook. The guidebook descriptions are quite lengthy, so I probably won't read a whole one as this video is going to get really, really long. <laughs> really nice cardstock by the way okay okay so all right so we have brilliance all right and this is what the guidebook looks like so you get a full page black and white image and then some of the description are longer than others. This one's quite short, but here's one, for example, that goes over two, two pages. So they're, each of them are um, varying lengths. And they're all beautiful, beautifully written. So for the brilliance, it says, Your center calls you deep into its stillness, its existence, the desire and grace of a newborn baby. Its effect on your passion is clear, and it is known that this place is the umbilical cord of your purpose. Own your path. Amplify the sound of full body knowing. Greet the whispering wild horses by the river, where they are ready to carry you to truths and ethics of your existence that you thought were lost. Its existence was there before you were born. This place your purpose sings a shining ocean of brilliance for action to answer the flow where nothing is stillness and stillness is everything and everything is direction waiting with passion for your voice to swing on your star. The answer is not outward. It is in the depths of your wild woman goddess, the place inside that shines like no other and knows its right to live. It is important for you to know that to brilliantly shine is your birthright passage this wild woman speaks, go to your place of stillness, move from there, and you will find what you are looking for. So that is the Wild Woman Mystery Cards by Elizabeth McLeod. This is the Land Sky Oracle, the sister oracle deck to the White Sage Tarot by Teresa Hutch. It comes in a two-part box, much like the indie version of the tarot deck with a small white book. And these are um, oracle size cards. We'll have a look at the book in just a moment. If your cards look a little different than mine, it's because I did um, punch out the corners, so I did round the corners on this deck and I have edged it in a light pink color. This is the extra card that comes with the deck, so this deck helps to understand how the deck, sorry, this card helps to understand how the deck is structured into eight suits or eight limbs based on the eight limbs of the Yoga Sutras by uh, the Sage Patanjali. If you are interested in this deck, I really suggest you go to my review and you'll get, you're going to get a lot more information. But in a nutshell, each suit has a major card, which is the one in caps in bold, and then there's five minor cards. This is based partially on Patanjali's Yoga Sutras and partially on Teresa Hutch's journey with yoga herself. So for example, in these two suits you have 10 yogic concepts which are intended to be preliminary practices to help you um, move through the path of yoga toward enlightenment. So it's kind of assumed at least way back when that one would work on all of these practices before working on the physical or the breath practices or even any meditation practices. However, with a, with a teacher, with some guidance and background knowledge, these five practices can definitely be worked on um, at the same time because they're, they're all part of the development of the, of the yogic practice. The last four suits are organized a little differently in that um, the creator has included a crystal a yogic tool, a positive aspect aim of yoga, and a challenging aspect as well as a deity. So each of these suits is associated with one of those things. And this isn't part of the Yoga Sutras, this is just part of how Teresa has decided to structure this deck. <clears throat> okay, so 
The cards are similar kind of shading and colors to the tarot deck. And <clears throat> these are the major cards. And for the first four limbs, you have stages of a cow, so a young uh, bull calf. And as you progress through the limbs, the cow um, matures and develops. So much like traditionally you would go through the limbs in this order, as you progress through the limbs, you would be maturing through your yogic practice. So this would be the land represented by the, the earthiness of the cow and then the bull. And then for the second four, you have an owl. Uh, you have different owls and kind of different um, moods and almost looks like the owls are actually in meditation themselves. So as the meditation practices develop, you kind of have different perceptions of the of the owl. So these are the second four suits, the second four major cards. And in the first couple of suits, as I mentioned, you have the 10 yogic practices. And these would be really um, nice cards to work with, with journaling, with self-study. Um, you could ran just take these 10 cards and randomly work on them one at a time, or you could take one from each of the piles and work on one yama and one niyama. So you really need to have some other resources to kind of really understand what these Sanskrit words, what these concepts refer to and how they can be brought into your life. If we go to the guidebook, you'll see that the descriptions are quite brief and to really get the essences of what each of these are, you really do need to go to a resource. And in that other video I mentioned, I have, uh, recommended a couple of resources. So those are the 10 yogic concepts. And then there's a card for five breath practices, so five pranayama practices, and these have, oh, I should say the chakra associations. So as part of this deck, Teresa has also incorporated chakra associations. If you have the tarot deck, you'll recognize this is the color for the Muladhara chakra, the ribbons that she has in the tarot deck. So there are also uh, contemplations that you could bring into the first three suits, the first three limbs, um, and work with the chakras as well too. So you could pull the Muladhara chakra card for the yama, the niyama, and the breath practice and kind of work with that together as a set. There's five physical asana practice cards. And she has instructions in the guidebook, step by step, how to work on these uh, asana, these yoga poses, as well as for the breath practices. However, as she says in the guidebook, and as I um, also believe, uh, you really do need to have a, a yoga instructor. And so these can be kind of a review and uh, a focal point for your study. But if you're learning these for the first time, it would really be beneficial to work with a um, to work with the instructor so they can watch your body and watch your breath because part of the experience of working with a yoga instructor and I'm not talking about a huge public class but working one-on-one -on -one or in a small group with a yoga instructor is that they they do watch your physical body they do watch your breath and it's really important for your um, safety um, both physically and uh, energetically that you're working with someone who knows what, what they're doing. So those second four limbs all have a yogic tool, and these are really pretty cards. So you have the tingsha, the mala, teacup, and some sage. And these tools can be brought into any aspect of the cards or any aspect of your practice. And they're really pretty illustrations, and uh, I am... Um, yeah, I really like those cards. You'll also notice on each of the cards, there is a kind of a mandala, a, some sacred geometry, and each of the suits is represented by that sacred geometry. And then going back to the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, you will, uh, not all of these ones, but for sure the challenging ones, so Avidya, Duvesha, Abhinivesha, and Daga, are part of the Yoga Sutras. So you will find some teachings in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali regarding these four challenges. And these are really big yogic concepts that you could spend um, 
months, years contemplating and how to work through those challenges. She's also included four crystal cards, which have nothing to do with the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, but are intended to work with the chakras and the layers and the development of your yogic practice. And then she's also included four uh, deities for contemplation, and they all have quite different energy. So I think the choices are really beautiful as well as the artwork. So that is the Land Sky Oracle by Teresa Hutch. Next is my Quality Time Self-Care Activity Deck by Deja Osborne. Her website is dejadruitt.com. And the deck does come with this uh, muslin cotton bag. I have not had the cards in the box since I've used them and it is, um, yeah, it's coming unglued. I'll need to repair that if I ever go back to it. This little guidebook does come with the cards. And we'll have a look at one of those examples. So she has directions and more activities for each of the cards. So each card actually is an activity, but she has um, some longer explanation for each of the 44 cards. All right, so let's have a look at the cards. These are the card backs. This cardstock is really thick. So for a small card, it is, um, it's unusual to have such a thick cardstock. This is a poker size card deck, maybe just a little longer than poker size. The colors are really pretty. And I think I was drawn to this deck for the artwork. It is not a deck that um, I pull up very often. I was thinking of gifting it to one of my daughters. It does have kind of a, a younger vibe. And this is not an oracle deck per se. This is definitely, as the title says, a self-care deck. So each of the cards is an activity to direct you towards your wellness, towards your self-care. And we'll have a look at the, at the little um, guide sheet in a moment. All right, so let's choose uh, a self-care card for today. And I'll read to you from the little um, guide sheet. So what would be of the... What would help make me feel lighter today? What would help bring me some happiness and joy and, you know, really take care of my, of my wellness? This is a matte deck, so it doesn't fan really easily. And then we have nature, beautiful card. Mm -hmm. So this is a card, of course, about taking some time and going outside and just being, being present. Mm -hmm. And I'll just read you from the little guidebook, number 18. Mm -hmm. Go for a walk at the beach or lake take a hike through the forest, or sit by a tree and have a picnic. So maybe this wasn't on the front of your mind today, and these cards just give you a little prompt. Mm -hmm. And the artwork is really lovely. So these are the self-care mm -hmm. activity cards by Deja Osborne. Next is the Sacred Creators Oracle by Chris Ann Donnelly, which is, just as the name suggests, an uh, oracle deck for sacred creators, for soulpreneurs as she refers to um, in the guidebook and the card descriptions. It comes with an amazing guidebook. Oh, here, have a look at the inside of the box. You are a sacred creator, and you can build the life of your dreams. So this is a deck for journaling. This is a deck for um, building your business, for looking into the sacred aspects of your life. And I just wanted to give you a flavor for this book because it really is um, worth the price of the deck. <coughs> Excuse me. So for each of the cards, you have uh, a synopsis of the meaning. 
and you have a self-care message, which is intended as the reverse message if you're reading reversals. And then there's a longer extended message and all kinds of journaling prompts to work with this card. There's always um, extended information as well too, and I believe this is a symbol that refers to more information on her website. So not only with this deck do you get the cards and this amazing book, you also get access to additional information through her website. Here is another card. So here's the 33rd card, same kind of thing. So essential meaning, self-care message, creator's message, and then all kinds of things to go with journal prompts. And every card is unique in the way that it is presented in the guidebook. I've divided the cards into three piles just to take a quick look at here. So the first 22 cards, if you are a tarot reader, you will recognize the intention of each of these cards. So the 20th card here corresponds to the judgment card in the tarot. What's your honest truth? So if you are a tarot reader and you are aware of what the 20th card represents, you can kind of add that underlying um, nuance to the card here besides all the information that is um, provided in the guidebook. So here is card number three, which is the Empress, right? You are the music. Card number six is the lovers, which refers to collaboration of souls. So there is this extra layer in the first 22 cards that isn't in the rest of the cards. So that might really kind of appeal to you. And you could also pull out these 22 cards and just work with them in conjunction with the tarot deck that you're presently working with, which might be a kind of a, a fun thing to do. And then we have four element cards, creator of air, creator of water, creator of fire, and creator earth. And there are no descriptions in the guidebook for these four cards. These four cards are meant to be worked with intuitively. However, you connect with the elements, be it elemental energy, um, be it connected to the tarot, so having the air connected to swords, the earth with pentacles and so forth. Perhaps you connect chakras or crystals or you have some other connection to the elements or just intuitively this brings a different layer to your reading. So these cards are a special feature of the deck as well too. And then you have a whole other array of cards with these incredible messages, raw intuition, follow through, and whether you're using these cards as a single draw or you're doing a layout with a very specific aspect to an idea or a project or a business you're developing, they are inspiring. They are multi-layered. And Chris Ann has so much experience and insight that it is um, wholesome and authentic and magical and inspiring to work with this deck. So this is the Sacred Creator's Oracle by Chris Ann Donnelly. They are beautiful, beautifully edged in this gold, white backs with a gold shimmer. It is an excellent card stock, probably 400 GSM. Can riffle shuffle. Or overhand shuffle these cards. Your sacred creator's message for today is <laughs> what's your honest truth? Okay next we have the Pythia Botanica and the Maiden Oracle by Nicole Rallis of Layla and Olive. 2016, 2018, I believe. And I thought we'd just look at them side by side in case you've been toying with the idea of getting one or the other. They are beautifully produced decks. The boxes are really, really sturdy. The cards are of the highest quality. Here's a quick glance at the inside of the boxes. With both of these decks, you get a little white book. From the Pythia Botanica, we invoke the myth of the Pythia an ancient priestess whose visions channeled prophecies from Hellenic gods, also known as the Oracle of Delphi. Her divinations were steeped in mystery and enigmatic wonder, a trusted presage that loomed in the hearts of all women and men 
who sought to persist against fate. And from the Maiden Oracle, welcome to the Maiden Oracle, where we voyage unbidden truths, having harvested with weathered tools and suffered nary a guileful fool. Here we journey to our selfless selves, then set sail on winds they meant to quell. We embrace the fall, plant spirits crawl, the walls and vine the well. For the Pythia Botanica, the guidebook, the cards are not numbered and they are not in alphabetical order. So you have to kind of randomly search through the book. You'll see that I have in pencil, I've numbered in my guidebook here and I have created a reference myself for this to, to work with this deck. What we get in the guidebook is, Passion flower is endure when the act of outlasting all mistrust, fear, doubt, hesitation, maturity, and derision arrives at your most profound celestial blessing. Blooming when you choose will be your finest proof. The messages in the guidebook are the energetic and spiritual messages from the plant. There is no botany or science or um, geographic references as to where to find the plants. And then the Maiden Oracle, similarly, we have, for example, let's go to Lily. We must neglect our duties to the few, so to remain self-approved and only to ourselves true. Maiden's Lily stands at an altar of earthly responsibility, unscathed by rigid structures and defiant in her own. Take on courtly independence. When they force a form of remiss upon us, we must blow a kiss and hiss. So again, very much just an energetic message from the plant itself. But this guidebook, the cards are numbered, making it a little easier to refer to the message in the guidebook. The Pythia has 48 cards. The Maiden Oracle has 68 cards. Both of them are edged in gold and have the same, um, same beautiful, beautiful cardstock. So these decks can be um, easily riffle shuffled or they can be overhand shuffled. So they just feel smooth and silky to the touch. They're in the Maiden Oracle, like the Sacred Creators Oracle we just looked at, there are 22 cards that are related to the first 22 cards of the tarot. So, for example, here is the zero card, the Fool. And on the card, we do not have the botanic information, but when you go to the guidebook, you will get the information about the botany on the card. So here we have Aster, born of Astria, the Star Maiden adorns our Maiden's Fool. So she does in the guidebook tell you what the plant is and then you have a message from the card itself. So here's card 24 and on the cards that are past the first 22 cards you do have the name of the plant and then you have a keyword. So let's have a look at 26 in the guidebook. So we see this is hibiscus, lust for dust is the keyword. Let us want for nothing, need for less, rejoice in our abandon and learn to lust for dust. The exotic beauty of hibiscus brings us youthful vital feelings. At this moment, perhaps that's all one needs for a present promise enveloped in wonder and surprise of an unknown yet welcome future means we love our very nothingness and it all lives in our eyes. So the descriptions are very, very poetic. The language is really, really beautiful. You can see the, card, the tea stain on the cards. They're all very, quite unique. The colors, yeah. So this is the maiden. So 68 cards, and then with the Pythia, 48 cards. 
and you have more white space on the cards. So there's no border around the cards. You still have that same tea stain effect, little different coloration. So this one is more ivory and this one has more of a uh, brown coloration. So on each of these cards, like I said, they're not numbered. You have the keyword and then the botanic information. So if you know your botanica, you really don't need to refer. You can read these intuitively for sure. And not having the guidebook in alphabetical order either by the keyword or by the botanical name means you have to leaf through it unless you have a, a reference for that. And if you would like me to send you a copy of my cheat sheet, I'd be happy to do that. So just to give you a flavor for this guidebook, so here we have Bloodroot, Entrance, and Treat. Bloodroot is Entrance and Treat, a sign to flourish with others by unlocking your own inner magnetism. Work for yourself but let others work for you as well. Invite them in, then cast your spell. So that is the Pythia Botanica and the Maiden Oracle by Layla and Olive. The author's name, the creator's name is Nicole Rallis. Next we have the Weaver's Oracle Journey Cards and Travel Guide by Carolyn Hillier. This is my newest indie oracle deck. It is a deck that I have been waiting a long time to add to my collection. The, my first impression of this deck is that if you are on a shamanic journey, if you are deeply connected to the earth, to the soul of the earth, to the vibrations of Pachamama, this is a deck that you are going to deeply, deeply relate to. If that is not a part of your path as of yet, this deck might not speak to you. Saying that, however, there may be other ways to tap into these cards, either through ancestral connections or past life readings, or there's something very mysterious and magical about the women in these cards. Most of them are older and they are weathered and experienced and you can see and feel, almost touch their tales just by gazing into the cards. These are beautiful cards just to hold and to, to be with. The production of these cards are really um, lovely quality. They have this lovely feel in the fingers. The colors are super subtle but vibrant at the same time. Some of them are full of blues, some are full of greens and purples. This one is very bright. Most of them aren't quite that bright and there's another bright one. And the deck is organized into two different uh, suits, if you will. So there is one path that you can follow. Each of the cards represent a direction, so north, south, east, or west. And that would, if you know something about shamanism, would give you extra information and layers of information. And they're also organized into clans. So there's several different ways that you can... Uh, bring the teachings and the threads through this deck. This artwork was created over approximately 30 years, so this is a lifetime of work of the creator. And all of the elements in these cards were actually brought to life. So not only the weavings, but the bowls and any of the objects you see in the cards were actually a part of the experience of creating the painting. So the drum was actually created by Carolyn Hillier and the antlers would have been present while the painting was being drawn as this flute would have also been there. I believe it is her husband that makes these um, flutes. To get a clearer understanding of what I'm talking about, I just refer to this page in the guidebook. So you can see that we have clans Guardian Clan, Earth Clan, Blood Clan, and all of the clans are different sizes. And then if you look down here, all of the members of this deck belong to a tribe. So we have the tribe of the East, South, West, and North. 
And then within each clan, we also have a member of each direction. So this first guardian clan, one of them represents east, south, west, and north. So there's all these intricate threads and beautiful things we can um, draw from each card. At the back of the book, there is a list of all of the sacred objects on each of the cards. So for example, in the first card, we draw messages from kindling wood, the fire stories, and the copper kettle. And each of these sacred objects is an integral part of the message of each of the cards. And then for each card, we have her yarn or her story. We have her braid, which expands on the sacred objects that are in each card. And then we have her cloth, which really is the magic of her teaching. And just to wind up this video, I'd like to share with you something personal about me and my experience with the Weaver's Oracle. On January 1st this year, I was at a psychic fair. I was doing readings there. And before the fair started, I was attracted to a reader across the way who was doing ancestral or past life drawings. And I was very curious about her work. And so I sat with her and she connected with me knee to knee. I believe she held my hand for a few moments and we sat quietly. And then she began to draw what you see here uh, on the right. After she was done, she asked me what I saw in the image and we had a brief discussion and I've had this picture inside my tarot journal since January 1st and reflect upon it from time to time. And when I received the Weaver's Oracle earlier this month and I held the cards and shuffled and put my energy in and asked which Weaver had a message for me, the one I drew was 33 Ashes, Udigan of the Dream Dance. And as I gazed into her face, into her eyes, I remembered this drawing that had been done in January. And I pulled it out and I looked at the two cards together. And to me, it looks like the same face or the same energy. And so it was kind of like a magical experience. And I'm still contemplating the meaning of the card, the meaning of the message and how this is connected to me energetically and what I have to learn from it. But I just wanted to share that with you. And that is my Indie Oracle Deck Collection. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I look forward to chatting with you. Stay well, my friends. Namaste.